there is a on the ground battle brewing in the Caribbean and it is on the ground for a strategic reason that by the time the local people realize what is happening it will be too late you will be in such a position of vulnerability that your efforts will not be able to change the tide and that is what this video is about today if we don't realize or recognize the value in our home, in our region, in our location and other people notice it, then we will be bamboozled as others have been in the past. And that seems to be what is happening today. That is why so many of the lands are getting sold out and is not kept for the people. Our ancestors fought for these lands and we should ensure that the generations to come can enjoy it forever. But if we are going to allow people to simply come in and do what they want to do, then you are going to get priced out of the Caribbean. Your money cannot compete with them because remember, all the money that was gained over the years of exploitation and robbery and all the stuff that's happened, it's just the reality. There's no hate. That money has since doubled and tripled and the people of the Caribbean has not closed the gap as it pertains to wealth. So with this fight, this brewing underground struggle for the Caribbean, there are multiple groups that's involved in it. Remember there were a bunch of Africans in the Caribbean. So before people start talking about the Caribbean is a multinational, multiracial place, this was not always the case. When things were going down, there were primarily African people in the Caribbean who are working these plantations and then you had their slave masters and overseers many times were Africans and probably some of the indigenous people who were chosen to be overseers as well. So when our ancestors fought the overseers realized that what's happening in the Caribbean their business in the Caribbean was at risk they were losing money because of all these rebellions that was happening throughout the Caribbean they had to make a decision. So that's when they made a transition. Instead of leaving the Caribbean to the local people, they needed to ensure that they don't leave all these Africans by themselves to develop. They needed to ensure that they keep their hands in the midst and keep eyes on these African people. And so there's this tag of war. For one, they introduced other groups to the Caribbean. You had the Asians, you had the uh, uh, Chinese, you had the Indians, introduce them to the Caribbean. So now you have this struggle. The Africans no longer wants to work the plantation, so let's get the Indians to work the plantation. That's one. The other is religion. You have Christianity, you have Islam, and all these different religions in the Caribbean that cause even more division. Third is restrictions. The governments that are put in place because they are trained and they are nurtured by the powers that be, there are certain restrictions in place so the African people are not able to maneuver or navigate as they would like to between their families and stuff like that. Also you have politics. Politics causes division as well. You have nationalism which seems to be the major force today where many people are pushing this nationalism stuff and these are the same people who act as if they have a issue with racism not realizing that nationalism can be just as deadly and just as dangerous as most of the recent wars the largest wars that we have encountered in the past few years was based off of nationalism so with all of these different entities and all of these different subjects they are able to neutralize the strength of the African people in the Caribbean, cause division, and therefore, they are able to control them even more. We should never overlook what Sun Tzu said in the art of war, that the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. He said to hold baits to entice the enemy, fiend disorder, and crush him. So what I am seeing in the Caribbean is a lot of disorder, a lot of identity crisis. So African people, people of African descent, do not allow people to isolate you on an island with them by yourself. 
Do not allow them to divide you from your brothers and sisters next door because they will never separate themselves from their roots, from their source. And you know how it is. Once you disconnect a device from its source, then it will no longer function. So the way to dilute you is to disconnect you from your neighboring islands, your brothers and sisters throughout the Caribbean who share the same roots as you and who went through the same traumas as you and are still going through it. Their job seems to be to isolate you from them and somehow convince you that you are one with them. They also isolate you from the motherland. So you have no one to come in and help rebuild or keep the numbers up. But in the meantime, they have their people coming from their nations and going back and forth. They have the same last names, they share the same languages, and they exchange culture. Don't be tricked. Don't be tricked. I already know the 90% will get tricked anyhow, but the 5%, the vanguards, the wise one, we are the one who's going to keep the water salt. We are the one who's going to keep the flavor in this thing. Because we are the one who put it there. 